Hey guys, welcome back to Titan Preparedness. Today is another video in the 30 days of prepping. I was asked originally to do two, this is going to be a bonus video. So today's video we are discussing how to assess and prepare for local, regional, and national threats. So the first thing we need to do is identify what a threat is. In my opinion, a threat is anything that could change your way of life, whether for the short term or the long term. Threats can be natural, man-made, or terroristic in nature. Now for local, we're talking about a 10 to 15 mile radius, your town. What is something that could happen in your town that could change your way of life, whether it be natural, man-made, or terroristic in nature? The first thing you need to do for your local assessment is find out what are some main infrastructures in your town. You would be amazed at how many people have no idea that in their backyard is a nuclear power plant or is a chemical plant or some sort of a gas storage plant. Most people don't know it until it explodes, until it goes off, until there's an event at that place and then they go, oh damn, I didn't know that was there, but now I've got to evacuate and pack my bags and leave, but I had no clue that was there. It is not that hard to look up on Google Maps your location, then start zooming out. And if it's a business, if it's a place of residency, it's going to have what it is. It's going to have so-and-so nuclear facility, so-and-so chemical facility, so-and-so gas storage facility. Know that those places are in your area and prepare for those. That is local. Think local of your town. What is within 10 miles of your town that can make you evacuate? Railroad tracks and train tracks are something you need to watch out for as well because you have no clue what that train is carrying. And train derailments are starting to happen more and more often. I don't care that the train full of coal tipped over until they tell me that it was also carrying a chemical and now I need to evacuate the area. Evacuations? Yeah, those aren't easy. Especially when you're talking about evacuating entire towns because yeah, we have no clue what chemical it was carrying and now it's all over the place. That is a local threat. Regional threats. Your county, your district, your province. These are larger on scale events. Again, man-made, natural, or terroristic in nature really doesn't matter. These are the ones that not only do you evacuate your town, but you evacuate your county, you evacuate your province, you evacuate your state if you're closer to another state. These are the bigger events. These are the wildfires. These are the floods. These are the major events that push you away from home. For a localized threat, you could just drive 10 miles to grandma's house and be safe and be fine. But with a regional threat, you might have to leave your county, your state, your area, go to another completely new area to you, and now make a life. You might have to travel further out because the closest area already packed up full of people. So now you're traveling 30, 40, 50 miles away and making a new life. Unless you have family outside of the area, chances are it's going to be in a hotel. Chances are it's going to be in somewhere that you're unfamiliar with. These threats can always scale up, they can always scale down. It just depends on what it is and how contained it can be. If an event happened at a nuclear facility, at a chemical facility, it would start off as localized, right? Think Three Mile Island. You evacuated the town. You didn't evacuate the entire region, but just the town. Now, had that gone bad or had it gone more south than what it did, you would evacuate more of the area you would probably evacuate half the state or within a 50 mile radius. Now, national threats. It's interesting that I'm doing this video a week, two weeks after the 21 an year anniversary of 9-11. I remember that day. I was young, but I still remember a lot of it. And I still go back and I watch the videos, the live videos from that day from the newscasters. The event took place in New York. It took place in Washington, D.C., and again in Pennsylvania, but they were evacuating damn near everywhere. I live in South Carolina, a small podunk town of 2,000 people. My school evacuated. Why did we evacuate a school that's 500 miles away? Because that's what everyone was doing. You evacuated your jobs, you evacuated the mall, you evacuated the hospitals, you evacuated your schools, you went home. Because home was the safest place you could go because you had no clue where the next attack was going to be. Any place that could hold people 
it got evacuated. Those people got sent home. That was a national threat. Now, you could say that the lockdowns were also a national event. Not as serious and not as threatful, but they played the same part. When they announced a two-week lockdown, people freaked out. And people did the same thing that they did on 9-12. They went and they bought guns. They bought ammunition. They bought food. They bought toilet paper. They bought anything and everything that they could get their hands on. That is a national threat. A shortage of everything. A shortage of the things that you think that you're going to need is a national threat. And whether that national threat be terroristic, like 9-11, man-made or natural, however you want to define the plague that we just had, people do the exact same thing. They don't feel safe, so they have to buy stuff. They don't feel safe, so the very next opportunity, they have to go get things that make them feel safe. Which is guns, ammunition, food, toilet paper, medical supplies, everything that we as preppers talk about disappears. Because if it happens once, it can happen again. 9-11 was a huge national event and people were scared. COVID lockdowns were a huge national event. People were scared, maybe not nearly as scared, but it was a national event. And we need to prepare for it. So how do you prepare? You stock up on the prepping items. You make yourself as off the grid as reasonably achievable. You have a place to go where you can feel safe, whether that be your home or whether that be 100 miles away at some bug out location. You find some place to go to feel safe. A local threat, 10 mile radius. Do you have some place outside of a 10 mile radius that you can go? If there's a power outage, if there's a tornado, if some dude blows up an RV downtown, do you have a place outside of a 10 mile radius that you can go? Regional threat, a 50 mile radius. If there's a fire, if there's a hurricane, if there's some big event in your backyard, can you travel 50 miles and find some place to stay? 50 miles is a long way. Do you have the vehicles that can transport both you and the personnel that you're carrying, whether that be the wife, the kids, the husband, and all the gear to stay at a hotel for a month? Do you have the funding to stay at a hotel for a month? Do you have family, friends outside of a 50 mile radius that you can go stay with? National threat. What is the plan? Where are you and your friends and your family going to go when there's no place to hide? National threat would be the hardest to prep for because, of course, there's no place you can go. But again, if you lived in New York, it's a lot different than if you lived in Florida. It's a lot different than if you lived in South Carolina. We were virtually unaffected. Now, you can't get a plane out of New York on 9-11, but on 9-12, you could drive out. Do you have the funding to get 100 miles away, 150 miles away? Do you have family, do you have friends that you can go stay with instead of living in a hotel 200 miles from home? As preppers, we need to plan for all different types of events, right? We talk World War III, we talk Civil War II, we talk alien invasion, zombies, financial recession. We talk about a lot of things. Currently, I'm doing a What If series that's talking about Puerto Rico, talking about the Texas power grid, talking about a fuel shortage. Some of the events I'm talking about were local events where you can travel 10, 15 miles away and be safe from all the danger. Some are regional, where your entire area is affected, and to get away from the danger, you would have to travel 50 to 100 miles. Some were national events. No place you went was unaffected. Again, with a localized event, you need to know what's in your area. With a regional event, you need to know what hits your area on a frequent basis. You know in California there's going to be a wildfires and power outages. You know in the Florida coast there's going to be hurricanes. You know in Alabama there's going to be tornadoes. These are events that happen every single year. Plan for them. Have an evacuation route. Have an evacuation plan. Have a meetup point. Have a place you can go. That way in case you're affected but your buddy's not, you can go to his house. He can come to yours. National events. Have some place you can go even if it's at home. Have some way to make both yourself and your children feel safe. If you need to go spend the weekend with grandma, 
to make your kids feel better, do that. But understand that as a national event, there's only so many places you can go. So guys, hopefully this gets you thinking, what in my area do I need to be cautious of? Is there a nuclear facility in my backyard that I don't know about? Start looking and start thinking about your area. What is in my area that could be a threat? Start thinking about your region. What hits my region once a year, once every six months that I need to be prepared for, that I need to be ready for, ready to evacuate for? What could happen to my area that would change my life? And then again, on a national level, what is the next big event that could change my life? All right, guys, hopefully you join me tomorrow in another of the What If series videos. And thank you to all the creators that are doing this national 30 days of preparedness. And again, thank you to Rogue Preparedness. Hopefully this gets you thinking. That's all I got.